In this video, we're gonna show you how to build a John Siskovich stress-free chicken tractor. Welcome to Actively Family. We just got some turkeys in our backyard and we were looking for a place to put them. After doing a lot of research, we came across the plans from John Siskovich for a stress-free mobile chicken tractor. Let me show you a couple of the reasons why we like this chicken tractor design. First, it's got this great door, which makes it easily accessible by somebody who is a little bit tall. You can walk right in and take care of your birds and then close them up tight at night. We also love this chicken tractor design had a whole lot of ventilation built in. Air can flow all the way through inside both sides. Being in Arizona, we needed lots of air because these birds are going to get hot. We also like that this is a chicken tractor, which means that it's mobile. That way we can move the birds around and they can graze on different parts of the grass. We also liked this plan came with a step-by-step -step instruction guide. For us, we're not big do-it-yourselfers. So it was really helpful to have all the supplies, the cut list, and all the instructions laid out really clearly. We also like this chicken tractor design because it looks good. Wouldn't you agree? Okay, before we get going with how we built the chicken tractor, I thought it'd be helpful just to show you all of the tools that we used in building it. We used an impact driver, a drill, safety glasses, gloves, a hammer, a wrench for screwing in the wheel on the end. We used a hand stapler. The pneumatic stapler would have been a lot easier, but we didn't want to fork out the money for it. We used chisels for the, making the lap joints. We used these clamps for basically every step. It would have been so much more difficult without clamps building this. Tweezers for twisting some of the wire, snips for cutting wire, uh, drill bits, a triangle, measuring tape, pocket knife, a conduit bender, and some kind of saw for cutting the wood. After we got all of our tools together, we took our supply list, which is in the book, and we took it to Home Depot and we got everything that we needed really easily. There's only a couple of things that we had to get online, the tarp and the wheels. We'll link them below. The final price tag for all the materials was about $400. After you have all your materials, you're gonna take them home, measure them, and then cut them to size. All of the measurements are included in the book. After we got our boards all cut and measured, we're going back through and cutting some half lap joints where some of the boards are gonna align. And we're using our circular saw again, except this time we're only going three quarters of an inch deep. We're gonna cut a bunch of little slits about an eighth of an inch apart. Once we have all of our tiny little slits cut, we're gonna knock them with a hammer and take out those pieces easily with just a wood chisel. Now that we've got all of our pocket notches cut out, we are going to lay out the pieces that are going to be interlocking. We're going to glue them first, and then we'll start screwing the pieces in. Now that we've got it all laid out, we are going to screw it together and assemble the frame. finished assembling all four of our sides. Now we've stood everything up, seen how it fits together. Clamps are really handy as our pilot holes. Now we're gonna screw this together. Next step is bending the electrical conduit. We want a 90 degree angle in the center of our 10 foot pole. So you mark center at five feet, and then to get our 90 degrees, we're gonna measure five inches off center in both directions. On the ends of our pole, we are wanting 45 degree angles. So you take your pipe bender, <laughs> and you're gonna line up your five inches that you had measured from the center and you're bending towards the center line. 
There's no way you can over bend because it stops at 90 degrees. Once you have that side done, you flip it around to the other side. Again, mark off your five inches. That's where you start from and you bend towards your center line. Because you're bending the two angles together, you're gonna get more than 90 degrees, but it's perfect angle of what you need. So we're lining up the arrow with our five inch mark that we made and we're gonna be bending towards our center line. We've got one side bent. Now we flipped it around and we have lined up our arrow again and we're bending the other direction towards center. To get our 45 degree angle at each end, we are just lining up the end of the conduit with the end of the pipe bender. Then we're gonna bend back until it hits 45, and then that's how we know we're done. A little bit more, and stop. It's helpful to have another person stand on parts of the tube and to help keep it steady. We did not build the little three-piece wood contraption that John mentions in his book to help with the 45 degree angle. Instead, all we did was line up the end of the conduit with the end of the pipe bender and then bent back 45 degrees and stopped when we got that mark. In the plans, it has you do the electrical conduit installation next, the roof over the top. We opted to save that step and instead we jumped ahead to installing the hardware cloth along the bottom frame of the box. So we actually are putting our hardware cloth along the inside of the frame as opposed to the outside of the frame and we're just using a standard hand stapler. It works just fine, just requires a little bit more muscle and maybe a few more staples. After we get the hardware cloth all wrapped along the inside, then we will go back and install the conduit metal frame roof. These clamps are really handy for holding up the hardware cloth so it's nice and even when I go to do my staples. We got the hardware cloth lined along the whole bottom of our base. Now we're moving on to the electrical conduit. In the book, it suggests that you build this little contraption to hold your pipe in place so you can drill your pirate holes. This is what we did instead. Let me show you. We've lined up all four of our pipes so they're ready to go. We marked where we wanted to drill the holes and then all we did was place a board behind and up here, we taped all the pipes together so they won't move. That way, we can drill our pilot holes without fear of drilling into our uh, baseboard here. Now we've got our top beam that we're just gonna attach a couple of zip ties to in each of the spots where it touches one of the beams. Okay. So our conduit frame is up. Now we are attaching the chicken wire We've opted to put chicken wire over all three sections. You just lay it over the top and we're gonna zip tie about every six to eight inches to hold it in place. So our sides of chicken wire are all up. For the back, we'll go in one big rectangle. The length of the back, the pieces that we don't need, we're cutting out and those are gonna be what we use in the front triangles. So our chicken tractor is now completely covered in chicken wire. We bought one roll of chicken wire that was four by 50 feet. We opted to save the middle section just to see if we would have enough. But as it all turned out, we had enough in that roll to get the entire coop covered, all three sections. If we had to do it over again, we would have covered the middle section with chicken wire first and then do the side sections so that they would have just laid right on top nicely. This is where we had to zip tie the two sections together. Had we done the middle section first, it would have just laid nicely on top and we wouldn't have had to do that. 
The one smart thing that we did do was we saved the door for last. We, go, we went ahead and framed the door, but you're gonna wanna save the hanging of the door for last because there might be some shifting and some movement going on. The book doesn't really give specifics on how to do your door. This is how we are gonna do it. We are going to attach our hardware cloth to the outside of the door and then put a top brace and a bottom brace. That's it. Ta-da! We're really glad we made the door this way, especially since we were stapling by hand. After we got all the chicken wire up, we added the wheels in the back, the rope in the front, and the tarp over the top. The final thing we added was a couple of brackets and a roosting bar. Let me tell you about what we did for the tarp. We bought the recommended 10 by 14 white tarp, but when we put it on, it was still a little bit big on the sides. And so we came up with a better solution for us. We bought a two by one piece of trim, 10 feet long. We stapled the ends of the tarp onto the board, and then we rolled the board up with the tarp. Once it was all rolled up to the height that we wanted it, we went ahead and secured the board with the tarp to the sides of the chicken tractor. If we were to do it again, we probably would just clamp it in place instead of screwing it so that we would have the option of rolling the tarp down or up based on how hot or how cool we needed the chicken tractor to be. I'm gonna introduce him. What's this turkey's name? This is Grace. Welcome to your home, Grace. Welcome to your new home, Luffy. Welcome to your new home, Fluffy. Well, I'm sure if John Siskovich was to watch this video, he would cringe at all of the mistakes that we made while making it, but we think it actually came together pretty nice, especially for a couple of rookies like us. Thank you, John, for making this chicken tractor design available. We couldn't be more happy. Well, thanks so much for watching our video. Bye. Bye. What do you got, Maddie? I think you have every every bard rock on your lap. Yeah. I think they like you.